Okay. Today, I thought we would uh, expand our range of topics that we've covered and uh, talk a little music. Um, and make a drink called a Mary Pickford, which uh, sounds fun and interesting. It uses measurements like six drops and one bar spoon, which I looked up is uh, the same as a teaspoon, pretty much. So that's actually not that hard. Six drops. Might fuck that up. Who knows? But, um, uh, what is it? Spotify. Uh, my year-end Spotify music catch-up thing. Um, it gives, you know, it gives you, like, your most listened to, and then it gives you a missed hits playlist, which I guess just, you know, cobbles together popular songs from genres that you've listened to and stuff. And, uh, I gave that a listen and discovered a band called Stand Atlantic in their, uh, latest album, Pink Elephant, which I've been jamming to a lot lately, so I figured it was worth talking about. But, as you know, first, we gotta make this Mary Pickford here. So, uh, I kind of liked it, the results of, like, bringing the camera in close. It's not like I'm doing any bar tricks or anything, but, uh, change perspective, get a better view of the ingredients. Um, so we'll probably do that again. Ooh, but, but first, but first, but before that, of course, two new alcohols here. So, gotta give those a try. Got some Plantation Three Star here. As per usual, uh, probably not going to like it, but uh, I like it in drinks, so. Actually, it smells pretty light. Maybe this will be another one that, like, pleasantly surprises me. Mmm. Yeah. That's drinkable. Uh, really, like, punches you with, like, a sweet fruity flavor um again i wouldn't just drink it but <laughs> not so bad um and then some luxardo uh maraschino liqueur Ooh. ah man i caught the cap with my knee but i couldn't couldn't complete the play let it fall and yeah this actually the top is actually kind of like shaped for drops actually so that's that's, ooh, no, it pours out. Ooh, okay. Hmm. Yeah. Definitely tastes like maraschino cherries, but, like, I get something else, too. Like, it's almost like the tartness almost gets to like a minty flavor, which is weird. It's not, I'm sure people would be like, you don't know what you're tasting, you're an idiot. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Tart, tart maraschino, maybe somehow combined with the rum, it gave me like a, like a minty buzz, but pretty good, pretty good, uh, pretty good all around there. So let's pull the camera in and do some fancy mixing. Okay, camera's in. Magic begins. There you go. That's a that's kind of a phrase, I suppose. Um, one and a half ounces pineapple juice. Bing, bing. Oop. Let's see. Oh yeah. Look at that pour action. <laughs> and we got. Okay, we're to our bar spoon already. Big moment here. Ooh. One bar spoon of grenadine. Don't fuck this up, Al. Uh. With the skill of a surgeon. Okay, now the thing that I'm actually probably gonna fuck up. Six drops of this Luxardo here. Um, it came out pretty fast before, so I'm going to try to do it in here, I guess. <laughs> One, two, We're call, we'll call that two, three, four, 
five, six. <laughs> Ooh, man, this stuff's thick. Created a splash. There's that. Simple drink here, just four ingredients. Now we've got our ounce and a half of rum. It's going to be a small one. I'm going to have to talk fast. Uh, let's see. And then I think this is... All right. Ice it up and shake it up, baby. Okay. And I'm gonna be. Mm. All right, we are on me. Fuck it. The pineapple glass is a thing, right? So let's just do it. It's such a small drink. I was like, might as well just use a regular little glass. But screw it. Grab a straw. Um, luck buggy. and give it the taste test. Moment of truth for the Mary Pickford here. I like its kind of, you know, like light reddish hue cherry color. It kind of looks like a cherry limeade Moscow mule or something like that. Basically just like a tart, kind of like brisk, refreshing drink. Yeah, like tart pineapple with just a hint of rum flavor. I like that. I like that a lot. I don't think I would drink a lot of them because of the, the tartness I think would kind of wear on you. So be like a good, a good refresher between like sweeter drinks or something. Bam, hit you with a Mary Pickford tart action. Reset that palate or something, I don't know. I dig it though. Um, B tier, maybe like a low A tier, we'll see. Uh, but moving on as we must, uh, Stand Atlantic's album, Pink Elephant. Really dug it. Um, good job, Spotify, suggesting me some music. Um, they, so, I mean, the dives, they're shallow, so we're not going to get too deep into things here. But uh, they're an Australian band. Uh, they're kind of like pop punk with a little bit, or like, they're like pop rock with a little bit of like maybe punk alternative kind of mixed in there. Um, and like when I say alternative, or I view alternative as like, rock music where the band members actually like care they actually put passion into their music and they try to kind of elevate just your standard rock stuff like a lot of people say alternative for like fucking like seether or something it's like no that is that's just like like garbage music that's like trash rock but i don't know i don't get too mad about things so like you like seether fine but i just i would hesitate to call them alternative when they don't, you know, when they sound like everything else on your local rock station that's kind of uninspired, I guess. I don't know. I'm getting, oh man, I'm getting pretentious here. I'm being a dick. Um, I get that way about music sometimes. But anyway, we're not here to shit on people. We're here to talk about Pink Elephant. So, uh, yeah. Pop, rock, punky, alty sound, uh, and just like every song... It's, it's, the whole album is like worth a listen. Like you listen to it and you're like, yeah, if I started 
that album again, I would listen to the whole thing again. I wouldn't really skip any songs. So like, that's a rarity. I guess really just listening to albums is a rarity now that everything's streaming, you know, you just put on a playlist or something. But I like to listen to whole albums just to get a feel for who the band is and stuff. And yeah, the whole album, like I said, is worth a listen. Um, there is one song called Blurry. I would say that's the worst song. That that treads into that like kind of uninspired regular alternative music, uh, I would say. But like, it's it's upbeat and fun enough to not really need to skip it. It flows with everything. Um, and like, you know, sometimes you might like feel weird playing. Oh man, excuse me. I ate some tacos and the tartness of this Mary Pickford is ugh, bringing them up. Um, but yeah, sometimes you might like feel weird playing certain music around people. You're like, oh man, like I really like this band, but they're kind of they're kind of out there, so I don't know if everybody here will like them. I feel like Stand Atlantic is like that sound that everybody can enjoy. So like, you don't gotta feel weird and be like, hey. I like this band Stand Atlantic. You want to give them a try and you could throw on some music and everybody would probably be like, yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty good. I like that. Maybe it's not totally their jam, but they would like it enough. Um, let's see. Uh, where'd it go from here? I guess just like, yeah, just like talk about the flow and what I like and stuff. So every song is like pretty upbeat and fun. And they all, aside from Blurry, they all have fucking hooks, man. Like, sometimes it's just the chorus just being, you know, it's always fucking fun, pretty much. And it brings you back. But the lead singer, it's a girl. Um, her voice is so fucking awesome. Like, she puts, I'll just call it, like, a vocal hook into every song. Like, she'll just hit an inflection. She'll raise her voice. Or she'll, like, dig deep and do this, like, gritty, raspy, like, sh yell or scream or shout or whatever you want to call it and she just really knows when to like fucking punctuate something with that with that inflection whether it's a rasp or a going high or anything and like yeah i just feel like every song the chorus will always bring you back but then she'll just pull in one of the like pump pull in she'll punch in a fucking vocal hook like that and really in even more um yeah oh man just every song has one part where i'll just like beat my chest because I know it's coming then I'll just like mm, I'll just I have to move to it it just always brings it out of me um so yeah uh her name's Bonnie Bonnie tip of the cap man I love her vocal work um instrumentals like I said like it's nothing super inventive but it's fun it's upbeat and like they'll mix in some little distortion and goofy sounds here and there and stuff it's fresh it's refreshing a little bit I guess it's fun enough it's fresh enough it's all it's all there to to I think kind of I don't know be an avenue for the lead singer to just smash those vocals that's what I focused on at least but the but the instrumentals and stuff all all good enough all like I said the finished product is just just enjoyable fucking music so you can't complain about that uh, and then let's see here okay so again these dives, they're not deep, but I'll get a little bit into like lyrics and what it's all about and stuff. My favorite song is called Jurassic Park. And it just, oh man, it just fucking bangs. It's just like, the whole song is just, you know, again, upbeat and fun, but it's just this slow, pro oh man, it's only two and a half minutes long, so it ends too fast. But it's just this little progression. Every time they hit the chorus, they hit it a little harder and a little harder until the end, and then the final, final, do go over, you know, they just, they bring it out, they go, they fucking build it up, and they drop it, and she, like, rips her voice a little bit more, and, like, I just fucking love that song, but the lyrics are goofy as shit, like, they don't make any sense, it's all about, like, um, lost dinosaurs, and ghosts in your garden, and skeletons at funeral homes, so I was like, well, None of, this all just sounds like, you know, nothing, but uh, there's gotta be a meaning, right, so I looked up the lyrics, and uh, what they, if there's any, if they gave any info as to like what they're about and stuff. And it's all about like uh, dealing with like mental illness or people in your lives that might have mental illness. And um, dealing, it's basically about like just mental, mental, mental issues. 
in general, like not being able to let go of something in the past, you know, having bad memories that just keep coming back or stuff like that. Um, so I did, you know, some human condition stuff, like just can't get enough of that topic, man. Life can just fucking suck. It can just wah, wah, can wear you down, you know? So to make a, a goofy metaphorical song about dinosaurs and ghosts and gardens and stuff, that's, that's, that's them like pouring their heart out about like, you know, not being able to get over something they've done in the past or, you know, having to deal with, with the issues that like mental illness can, can bring to bear. Like, you know, like you love someone, but maybe they're not always who you, who you fell in love with or something like that. So just, you know, like hitting heavy topics, but in like a fun, really jammy fucking way. So yeah, I didn't look into any more of their lyrics, but uh, for that one, I'd say that's a win. I'd say they pulled that off. That was some good shit. Um, and then there are two, so I said it's like mostly all fun stuff. There are two slow songs, or two slower, more mellow songs. Uh, one's called Drink to Drown, and the other's called Silk and Satin. And they're both like, you know, pull it off. They pull those off flawlessly as well. Like, shift the tune for two quick songs. It goes, it goes, Drink to Drown. I think Do What You Want is the next one, but that's like a more fun one. And then Silk and Satin. So in all the in all the fun stuff, they wedge into uh, slower songs, punctuated by one more fun song, and I think they fit them in good. It's good a uh, good little reprieve from all the bounciness and stuff. Shows another side of them, and again, really fucking sick vocal hooks is the term I'll keep using. She just as as fun as she can be, like hitting high notes and belting out like raspy parts slowing it down and really just pour in some fucking like just like oh dour passion into 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 some mellower beats kills that too so yeah if you want if you want a fun listen that that i think everybody could could respect or like a bit and you're into that sort of pop pop rock alt punk scene uh fucking yeah definitely give it a listen i don't know i guess i just, i gave it like too good a review because i was like everybody will like this but there's plenty of people out there who won't but i think it was really good really fun i've been jamming to it a lot at uh work at work while working from home and stuff uh and i think i think if it sounds at all like something you like you should give it a listen and i hope you will really like it too let me think. I don't. I don't think there's anything else I wanted to touch on. Like I said, I try to be quicker with this small drink here. Um, yeah, I think that sums it up. Punchy, fun beats. Uh, really awesome vocals, and just a tightly packed, good, good flowing album. And as for the drink, the Mary Pickford. Mm -hmm. Tart, tart cherry, fuses with the pineapple, and elevates the rum flavors. I've been watching Food Wars on Netflix, so I tried to tie the flavors together there like they do on that show, but I think I failed at it. But I hope you fail at nothing. Have a really great fucking day.